This is Karen with NewClevelandRadio.net, and it is time for The Rant with Barbara Rose Brooker. And again, I want to welcome all new listeners and viewers on YouTube and Instagram. We are just growing our base. Today, Barbara Rose Brooker, an author, an advocate for ageism, a mother, a woman who wants to be a movie star and still can be, uh, has a wonderful guest. And Barbara, tell us about your guest today. Thank you, Karen. It's great to be here. So honored to have John Milford with us today. And let me just give a little introduction to John. John has been a leader in the retirement field for over 35 years. And I could go on and on with all of his things, but these are the main points that I want to talk about today. Oh, also, also listeners, he was in charge of the grown-up division at the San Francisco Commonwealth Club. And being 84, almost 85, and having many books out, John always allowed me and hosted me to talk about age and ageism. So John is not only a leader in the retirement field, but what I think is incredible is he is the co-founder of Tech Enhanced Life, a public benefit corporation exploring new technology, how to improve our quality of life as we age. Now, I just want to say one thing, being the founder of agemarch.org, be sure and go on. We're up to 43,000 today. Um, I believe at 84, I know this, purpose is the, long, is the key to longevity. Purpose is everything. You don't get bogged down by thinking, oh my God, I'm 84. Or for those who aren't mobile or who who can't get out like I'm fortunate enough to, it's all mind and spirit anyway. So John, I want to know how you provide purpose for people and who are, quote, older. Well, we started small and we built up. Um, We realized that we needed to talk to people who were 60, 70, 80 and up um, to find out their point of view on um, what life is like in later years and what some of the problems are. And one of the things that we heard uh, uh, frequently, maybe one out of three would say, you know, I've had a career, I've raised a family, but now I live alone and I, I don't feel useful anymore. And we thought, you know, that's something that we could uh, uh, zero in on and begin to make, make possible. So we formed groups, discussion groups of people in this age group. And our purpose was to get their ideas and their um, uh, perspectives on uh, products that are being brought forth in the market that products, many products are designed by people in their 20s and 30s who have no idea what the problems of a person in their 80s or 90s would be. And so they began to talk about these products and give us their um, points of view, uh, what works for them, what doesn't work for them, and more importantly, what they'd like to see happen. Now we have a website that we built and these discussions uh, were posted on the so that anybody could come in and listen to the discussion or read a a little summary. And we found out that businesses were spending time on our website, listening to these discussions. Now, the groups that we form, and we have had five uh, permanent groups, and we have a number of groups. Now that Zoom is in business. Um, these groups uh, are called longevity explorers. Oh, I love that! It, it's like it's like a club. 
<sighs> so, you know, once a month, each group, you know, gets together. Um, we talk about what they want to talk about. Talk about they want to know why products come in packages with typeface on it so small that they can't read it and even have difficulty with their glasses. Exactly. Another point of view is products that are in um, curvy bottles like shampoo and, and conditioner. People have a shampoo and a conditioner from the same manufacturer. The bottles look exactly alike. Who wears glasses in the shower? <laughs> it's uh, the shampoo from the conditioner. Right. These are the types of things that older people have to say to somebody that's 20. And that's opening them too, John, is that also an issue? How you can't open them sometimes, it's so well, long. That's a good point, Barbara, here. Now, one of the busiest pages on our website is the page that we have on the best jar opener for older people. It's on the number one page of Google. And um, people come in and they look and see that there are different reasons why an older person has trouble uh, getting things opened up. Some of it has to do with um, grip. A person may have enough arthritis that they simply can't grip the way they used to be able to grip. Or the other is leverage strength. And um, so people talk about why it is that things don't work for them. And then um, we have a variety of things that they can find. Um, we don't sell anything. We just make the information available and people can buy with but to them. So that, that's a, a good point. So um, design of packaging, um, um, putting things in containers that people can open is important. Um, another vexing problem that people have are these clear clamshell packaging containers. Yes. Um, the, ones, the ones that you see in the grocery store that have berries in them are, are not so bad. Yes. But many times you'll buy something that comes in the mail or you buy it at this hardware store and it's in a plastic, clear plastic clamshell package that, that people just can't get open sometimes. They can't open it, they throw it out. Well, yeah, so, <laughs> so our uh, longevity explorers talk about all those things. Um, another thing that we talk about is uh, what apps do they have that are useful? When we started these discussions, I would say possibly one person in 10 had a smartphone. That was six or seven years ago. Now, oh. I would say eight or nine out of 10 have a smartphone. John, is it fear? Is it fear of technology? Well, it just takes people a while to get used to things. Get used to it. Um, but they have. Like I said, it was very rare in the beginning, six or seven years ago, that people had a smartphone, the older people. And now, um, and, and it's through the influence many times of their adult children. Their adult children will say, Mom, I want you to have this. And yeah. they'll say, well, I don't know what to do with it. And now, you know, the, the kids will teach them how to do it. And, and if, the, if their adult children don't have time, their grandchildren do. Right. This is amazing. I just have to say what you're doing is even beyond what you're doing. You're integrating the young with the older people. We're, well, you're integrating, you're educating them through revealing, letting them reveal the things that, that we don't take for granted. Right. We just published an article recently um, that was written by several of our explorers about their favorite grandparent apps. These are apps that they can use to stay in touch with their grandchildren. Oh. To share stories, to share pictures. Um, there are all types of things you can do. And we, people are very interested in uh, grandparent apps because many grandparents don't travel now the way they used to. Right. John, this is amazing. Is this, are, how do you execute this how will the world know about what you're doing? I mean, will there be an app to you? Will companies come in and? We're, we're a website and um, 
you know, our, our, our link is, is the way to get here. Um, companies do come to us. We have uh, had um, quite a few companies ask us if we would involve our longevity explorers in answering certain questions they want answered mm -hmm. on a private basis. And one thing that we believe is no one should work for nothing. So <laughs> our that. longevity explorers who participate in these discussions on behalf of uh, manufacturers all receive uh, compensation for their time. It's- uh, Oh, oh know, my heart so, throbs at that. No, really, no, nobody should be working for nothing. Now, uh, there are some, some outfits that think to themselves, well, we'll just go to a senior center and take a box of donuts and some coffee and get these old people to tell us, you know, what they want. That's, no. to me, that's not fair and it's not productive. No. We want people to uh, become longevity explorers, to belong. It doesn't Give them cost pride. Them. You're giving them age pride and purpose. Well, too, and it, it one of the, one of the issues with older people, especially once a person maybe is widowed and their children have moved away, yeah, a person can become lonely and isolated. Right. Um, all their neighbors have moved out of the neighborhood, and they don't know anybody that lives in the neighborhood anymore. So this gives a chance for people to knit together and find other like-minded people. Oh, uh, now is this program? going on in any other cities that you know of? Well, sure. It's, uh, we have, I, I think there are five right now in remote locations. Uh, we have one in Nova Scotia. We have one in uh, Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, one in uh, Pittsburgh area of Pennsylvania. Another in Cincinnati. And uh, there are five in California. This is we, amazing. Uh, we have on our website, if people are interested in joining one of these circles, or if they want to start a circle, we can help them do that. And it's all right there on the website. Okay. Well, we'll make um, sure we have that. The question, too, I have for the explorers. Oh, I'd love to be an explorer. I think this is so important. How, this is kind of a silly question, but beyond the website, how do you advertise this through the media or print? I know you've been a partner in writing some articles about it, but how can this get out more for the masses? That's a good question, Barbara. Um, I think if we could get the attention of um, people that write for influential publications. Um, now we did we, uh, the MIT um, Journal uh, did an article on what we're doing, um, and, but there, there, somehow there needs to be a uh, an, an, an upsurge in yes. Um, yes. published published uh, articles. Otherwise, it's a matter of uh, Google. Google um, people search for a certain topic, and we, we're big on that topic, and they come to us. John, is it, is it possible like we have an ARP magazine that we you could have an Explorer magazine because you are really bringing globally people from I say 60 up who are treated and defined very differently by their age from those who are younger. So you're not only sociologically integrating the world. This is very important. But how can more people get involved? Because so many people, like you say, they don't even have computers or they don't know how to go on Google. They don't know how to get to you. We don't, we don't advertise it yet. Uh, that's mm -hmm. not what we do. Um, we're depending on people coming to us and they do. In fact, we got the attention of a, a, a government agency in Canada that's uh, well-funded and is very interested in what we're doing and would like to scale it. So we have uh, signed a, an, an agreement with them and um, I'd like to see that go to other countries that have such agencies because I know, especially some of the Asian countries have a real 
issue with a number of older adults there and how to um, connect with them and help them. And uh, so, but that's, that's future. Um, it's, it's starting to happen and it, 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 will, it, will, it will take off. But locally, um, influential writers who you know, publish articles about what we're doing or some of the things our people are doing uh, would probably be the most help. I, th I think that is absolutely wonderful. So John, in your long experience with retirement and, and so many, so many other facets of aging, the aging world, what do you think, this is right off the top of my head, is, is, is the most difficult right now to break? Is it, is it our anti-age message? Is it that people are being herded away from their homes as soon as they're 50 something into assisted living? I mean, what is, what is the most difficult part to, like the explorers, for example, are really helping so many things because these issues you mentioned are very, very important. I deal with them all the time myself. But how, how can we get in on a big global level? That's the thing. This is so important what you're doing. Well, Barbara, to be honest with you, we're not ready for global yet. <laughs> we're, we're I would love to see it. Go, I mean, it's so important. Yeah, but I mean, we, we, we want it to be global, but mm -hmm. you know, it has to be. Um, line by line, step by step. And it has to be um, quality product. Um, the Tech Enhanced Life doesn't charge anything to the readers and we don't intend to. Um, we do have revenue that comes from the companies that mm -hmm. want to hire us and the Explorer, Longevity Explorers to answer their questions. And that's really where the revenue comes right now. I'm interested in the questions too that they write. It must be so interesting and well, the very right on the home page. Um, we have a, a, a current comments, a whole column there of comments. People commenting on what they've seen there or things that they'd like to see. Um, I'm going to read today. Oh, you should take a look. It's. I'm it's going right. to today. I'm interested because. Yeah. I am constantly throwing out jars of things because I can't open it and I don't, I'm afraid to ask people in my building. Well, I guarantee you that you will find a solution to your problem. <laughs> and like I said, we don't sell anything. Uh, we just try right. to help people find things that they can buy if they think that that's what they want. Um, we also want to uh, have credibility. We don't want to we don't want to be just one of these loud, noisy, pushy websites where you have to buy things or sign right, up. Right, right. We just are trying to help people find solutions to the problems of aging and to be heard in the process. You know, John, the concept behind your program, if cities, if communities really wanted to work with the population as it grows older. They, they could take your model in many different ways because we all do want to feel useful, but all it takes is going to the doctor one day and the doctor saying, you know, you have arthritis, so you shouldn't be doing this or you shouldn't be doing that or giving us instructions that make us feel not whole. And it's about time that we all come together and realize that as young children, there were things we couldn't do and we had to ask for help or learn True. new ways. True. So why should it be any different as we get older? True, because we're from a generation of not technology, you know, um, those like myself. And suddenly you're thrust into this whole other. But I, I think what John what strikes me about what you're doing, John, is the respect 
and the acknowledgement that you're giving humanity, people who have lived a long time, what it, however one wants to be labeled, you know, older, whatever, but giving them the right to speak out and to ask questions, that is amazing, or, or have ideas. Do you see people too who are older who have ideas about inventing certain products? Absolutely. Yes, Barbara, absolutely. Um, we have an explorer lady that um, had her own ideas about um, an off-road walker. Um, she wanted, Ooh. she needed a little help with her balance and um, and uh, so she and but walkers didn't do for her. She wanted to be able to go out, go across the grass, right? Go on a little bumpy trail, right. and so she uh, got together with some engineering people and invented a cross-country walker. And wow! So what so, happened to it? <laughs> yeah, well, they're out there, and um, other people have have come up with their own ideas. Um, some have come up with uh, better ways to clip your toenails. One of our busiest pages. Yes. The best toenail clippers for older people. Oh my and, God. Uh, <laughs> these things they exist, or we've had things uh, suggested in our meetings that later came out as products. Uh, one was a taller lady who did not want to use a walker because it made her lean over grab the handlebars and lean over. And she said, I don't, want, I don't want to lean over when I walk. I want to stand up straight. And somebody now has a, uh, an up, upright walker, you know, so where you can stand up straight and walk. That's we had him on your show, Barbara. Yes. Uh, I was just yes. thinking, I was just thinking about putting them all together now. Yes. This is so amazing. I, that, I, I that idea, yeah, that idea came up in Portola Valley about five years ago mm -hmm. from one of our explorers. Mm -hmm. And now someone's done it. So we're happy. So John, so how many explorers do you have just roughly? Well, we don't count, but I a lot, I guess. We don't take a census, but it's uh -huh. in the hundreds. In the hundreds. Mm -hmm. A group of explorers will be somewhere between 10 and 20 people. And, uh, and how right. do we become explorers again? Well, you can yeah, come to the website and sign up. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at your website right I'm, now. John, I'm going to. And it says, don't let growing older get in the way. How important is that message? I mean, everything. not only do we let it get in the way, but we allow our adult children to let it get in the way. Um, and that's, if you don't mind, I'm going to be quoting you all the time with that because I think it's about time that we stop looking at the age and look at the abilities. Oh, that's very important what you just said, Karen. And that's what John is doing. This is this is absolutely I'm I'm sitting here, excuse me for interrupting so much, but I'm very excited about this. And I feel bad that I why did I not look at it before? This is amazing. I didn't quite realize what you were now doing with product. You, the world should hear you. <laughs> to Karen's point, uh, we learned early on talking to, to uh, older adults that age is a poor metric for ability. Age the, and, and ability are, are just, you know, you can't use one to measure the other. And um, that's gotten more and more true as we have, hear from people about their uh, points of view. And, and why are we thrown out and segregated at certain ages and, and defined? It's so sad, the age segregation. And then people feel useless and they, they get depressed, they get marginalized because of their age. And then they stop wanting to be an explorer, for example, and um, developing ideas and products. It's, it's amazing. 
this, this is very, very important. I say bravo to, to you for doing, how did you think of it? That's what I wanna know. How did you come up with this idea? Well, this was, um, came out of a conversation that I had with my uh, business associate, uh, Dr. Richard Caro. Um, he and I did some consulting work for uh, some startup company at our companies. And uh, he said to me, John, he said, I think there's a lot more that could be done in this aging space than is being done. In other words, you know, business and society and commerce is, is not really focusing on older people and the needs of older people. And he said, I think there's a lot we could do. And it took us a year or two to interview as many people um, as we needed to, to get the ideas about what we could do. And one of the first ideas was to put up a website that would point people to ways to get around the roadblocks that aging throws up in front of us. And that was the website. And then we uh, developed the idea of continuing these interviews in the, in the form of explorer groups, older people exploring longevity. And, and, and that's where um, we had the idea that they could inform some of the 20 and 30 year old designers and engineers that are coming out with products that older people don't want. So in, in, out of those conversations and those small beginnings came the website, which is very busy. Um, we, we, I, we have a lot, a lot of traffic every month to that website. And like I said, companies are coming to us now and, and asking for our advice. I think this is so important. It's the, it's intersecting humanity. Our and philosophy is not to advertise what we do and beat a drum and make a lot of noise. Right. Our philosophy is to do something well enough that people come to us mm -hmm. and see a credible, a credible thing. It's it, and it definitely through word of mouth and the the good work. It, this is happening right now, obviously, because this is such a need, such a need not to be thrown out because of a certain age. Barbara, I want you to know how easy it is to apply to be an explorer because oh, I've done it already. I went out to the <laughs> website, I went through the page. We do so many shows through New Cleveland Radio on these subjects. I know. And I will tell you that um, I'm not afraid to age, but I want to age, as they say, gracefully with purpose. And an organization like this, you know, gives us that opportunity. And the people that I could meet through here mm -hmm. would just enrich my life tenfold. Well, I think all of us, yes. I mean, as I approach my 85th birthday, I feel very grateful that, that I'm able to work and do the things I want to do. And right now, after hearing what John is doing, and John has done so much in, in this field, and he is a legend. But this specifically with the Explorers excites me because I'm thinking, gets you a community and, and more purpose and, and meaning you don't feel alienated. Right. Very important, John. I, I'm so thrilled about this. And we definitely have to have you back to continue this. Wow. There's a lot you have to say. Well, it's thank you. It's we, truly. We, let us all continue. <laughs> we, we certainly will. And uh, if you're interested, uh, I'll be glad to. Oh, absolutely. I also want to write about it and um, we will talk. Very fortunately, next week, 
listeners, we have Candice Milford, who happens to be John Milford's wife, and a real delight. Oh my God, is it next week? I just remembered that I think it's the week after. I have to look at the calendar. We have it now. But a treat also in the field of do we say the field of aging? It's really, it's the field of humanity. You're adding to humanity. Why has ageism become such a uh, soundbite, you could say? Don't you think it's almost like a soundbite, a vocation instead of a serious condition? Anyway, sorry to be ranting. I guess that's why we call it the rant. <laughs> that's your job, Barbara. <laughs> Thank you so much, John. I will look forward to being an explorer. I'm going to sign up right now. Thank you so much. Take care. And thank you for using the word longevity. That yes. I think is important. Yes. Have a great day, everybody. We'll talk thank to you all soon. Thank you. Bye.